This is the optimization practice problems um, worksheet. Let's look at number one here. Um, a rectangular field is to be fenced off along the bank of a river. Uh, so a rectangular field here. Uh, no fence required along the river, so just the three sides. If the material for the fence costs $8 per run foot for two ends and $12 per foot for the side parallel to the river, find the dimensions of the field of the largest possible area that can be enclosed with $3,600 worth of fence. All right, so the idea with optimization is uh, we first want to identify which variable we're trying to optimize. And then once we have that, then we're going to try and get the right side of the equation down to one variable. Once we have that, then we find the derivative of that equation with respect to x uh, or y, depending on which the independent variable we're dealing with. Uh, find the derivative, set equal to zero, and solve for x. And then we go back to the problem and see what, um, uh, what the problem is asking for. Uh, along the way, uh, we may need to involve a second equation uh, in order to narrow down our equation, or the right side of the equation, down to one variable. All right, so in this case here, uh, we're dealing with area and perimeter. So uh, let's see here. We're trying to find the optimal or the uh, largest possible area. So that indicates to us that we're trying to optimize area. Okay, so let's think about what, what area um, in, uh, for this problem is. The area for this uh, rectangular shape it's just going to be x times y. I'm going to assign um, the horizontal as the x and then the vertical as the y. So area is simply x times y. We want to find the derivative of um, area equation, but notice that there's too many variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, create another equation that will allow us to replace the y in terms of x or x in terms of y. But either way, we're trying to get our, the right side of the equation down to one variable. All right, so we also have information about dealing with perimeter or cost. All right, so uh, the cost of, um, uh, uh, of this rectangular field um, is going to be, um, is going to be um, the product of the, the, the cost per running foot uh, times the length of each of the sides. So um, uh, I have P representing perimeter, but really this should be cost. Uh, we can represent cost as um, 12x plus 8y plus 8y. So depending on what x and y is, if we once we find out the, the length of x and length of y, if we plug all that in, this will essentially give us cost. So let me um, put this in parentheses. Really, um, uh, this equation is for cost. All right, so we have um, an equation for cost. Uh, we know that the uh, the cost that we're dealing with is thirty six hundred thirty six hundred dollars. So we can replace C or P with thirty six hundred. Now we have an equation that will allow us to. Um, we have two equations that will allow us to go, get one equation down to just um, one variable. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, get everything in terms of x. So um, in this equation, I'm going to solve for y. So if I solve for y, subtract 12x from both sides, divide both sides by 16. And then I plug this expression in for the y. Um, now I have my equation down to one variable. It's just a matter of trying to clean this up and uh, rely on power rule to find the derivative. So if I distribute the x through and divide by 16, I'm going to get 225x minus 3 fourths x squared. All right, so now once we have our area equation, uh, so now we should have to find the derivative. So to find the derivative, we can find uh, go through power rule. So 225x becomes 225. 3 fourths x squared becomes 3 fourths times 2x, which is 6 fourths x. We find the derivative set equal to 0. Once we have that, we can solve for x. 3 halves x equals 225, so x equals 150. Uh, so the optimal um, x value uh, provided um, given these restrictions uh, with cost and perimeter is going to be 150 feet. So um, the optimal um, x uh, distance or length um, is going to be 150 feet. So if that's the case, then we can um, use uh, a known equation to help us solve for y. So um, we have an equation already from uh, the cost equation. So if I plug 150 in for x, I can then solve for y. 
And when I solve for y, I get 1800 equals 16y. So y is equal to 112.5 feet. So therefore, uh, the optimal um, possible uh, um, dimensions for um, to create the largest possible area given these um, uh, restrictions uh, will be 150 feet by 112.5 feet. All right, number two, a rectangular storage container with an open top is to have a volume of 10 cubic meters. Uh, the length of the base is twice the length of uh, its length. Uh, material for the base costs ten dollars per meter squared. Material for the base for the size costs six dollars per meter squared. Find the cost of the material for the cheapest container. So we're going to try to minimize the surface area. We're trying to minimize surface area. Find the cost of the material. So we're trying to um, uh, we're trying to um, find the optimal cost. Okay, trying to find the optimal cost. Right. So. Um, and then the cost is going to be uh, uh, very much related to surface area. All right, so let's think about what surface area is. Surface area, uh, we're going to add up um, each of uh, the areas of each of the faces of this rectangular storage container, and we're going to add them all up. So, uh, but uh, they, they're all going to, uh, each of the sides, um, uh, we have to be careful about the dimensions of these sides here. So. Let's see here. Open top, so there's nothing up top here. Uh, length of the base is twice, uh, the length of its base is twice its length. So um, I'm going to have one uh, length be 2x and then the other length being x because for the base that's the relationship. And then the height of this box, I'll let this represent as h. All right, so we have five faces to worry about. There's nothing up top here. Um, so let's start off with uh, the, the base that's on the ground. So the area of the space um, is going to be 2x squared. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, this face that's facing us here um, is going to be 2x times h. So 2x times h is this front face here. And then the back face will be the same as well. So 2xh plus 2xh. Okay. And then the side um, has an uh, area of x times h. So the side is x times h, and then the other side is also x times h, so x, h, x, h. So we have the area of each of the five surfaces represented here. If I combine like terms here, we get 2x squared plus 2xh plus 2xh, and these are like terms. I can combine this to be 4xh. Combine some more, I get s is equal to 2x squared plus 6xh. Now, when we factor in the cost of each of the faces, uh, we know the base is going to be ten dollars for um, uh, the base, and then each of the sides is going to be six dollars. So, six dollars times six x h. Okay. Um, so we have so if we clean this up, we have our cost equation being twenty x squared plus thirty x h. Um, now we would go ahead and find the derivative, except there is a variable that's sticking out um, uh, that we need to. Uh, uh, replace in terms of x. So we need to find a way to replace h. So we have to um, involve another equation that will help us get there. And the other equation is going to be with volume because we are given information about volume. Uh, the volume is to be 10 cubic meters. Let's think about what the volume of this box is. The volume is going to be length, width, and height. So length is 2x, width is x, height is h. So 2x times x times h is 2x squared h. That's the volume. We know the volume in this case is going to be 10 cubic meters. So if we solve for h, then we can use the, uh, um, uh, the resulting value to plug into the cost equation. So if we divide both sides by 10, 2x squared, we get 10 over 2 is 5, so 5 over x squared. Or I think in this case I left it uh, as 10 over x squared and simplified it later. So put this in for h. Now we have an equation in terms of x. It's just a matter of trying to clean this up. Um, and get um, each of the terms uh, ready, um, prepared for, uh, so that we can apply power rule. So uh, let's see, if we clean this up a little bit more here, uh, the x's will cancel out, but there, there's one x left in the denominator. We bring that up as x to the negative one, and we get 20x squared plus 180x to the negative one. We have our cost equation. Now we can find the derivative. So the derivative of 20x squared becomes 40x. 
the derivative for 180x to negative 1 is negative 180x to negative 2. We've, um, so we found the derivative. Now it's just a matter of finding the critical point, uh, the critical value. So we set the derivative equal to 0. We solve for x. We get uh, 40x cubed equals 180. Uh, divide both sides by 40. Take the cube root of both sides. So x is roughly equal to 1.65 meters. Uh, find the cost of the material for the cheapest container. So um, we found uh, that the optimal uh, length for the x value is going to be 1.65. So if we plug 1.65 into the cost equation, uh, this cost equation has still has the h in it. So if we plugged into the cost equation that's already everything in terms of x, um, we'll get 20. 1.65 squared plus 180 times 1.65 to the negative 1 and then the cost um, the minimum cost will, uh, with the uh, optimal um, uh, dimension will uh, come out to be $163.54 alright number three a piece of cardboard measures 10 by 15 inches uh, four equal squares uh, it's a misprint here four the number four, equal squares are removed from the corners of all sides. Find the maximum volume. So uh, imagine each of these corners are cut from uh, this box here. Uh, and then we can just fold along these, um, uh, these flaps here uh, um, to, uh, to make it uh, vertical uh, to produce a, um, a box. Okay, so with no top. All right, so... Uh, Let's think about um, what the dimensions of this box will be after we cut out uh, this um, x um, corner, um, or corner with, um, uh, with length x. So that means that, it, and once we cut out x, then this length um, was 10, and then this starts off, this sheet, uh, sheet of cardboard starts, started off as 10 by 15. So if this is 15 inches, then if we cut out x's, from both sides of this, um, uh, from this 15 inches, then we're left with 15 minus 2x. So 15 minus 2x will be the resulting length of uh, the box. Okay, the width um, will be 10 minus x from both corners. So 10 minus 2x. So we have our width or length being 15 minus 2x, our um, uh, width being 10 minus 2x. And then our height is simply just x. So imagine uh, these flaps coming up. So once the flap comes up, then that vertical distance will be x length. So uh, here's the height of the box. Okay. So looks like we don't have to, and we're trying to max. We're trying to um, maximize volume. Uh, so we just have to find uh, the derivative. And notice that this is all in terms of one variable. There's no y's, there's no h's, everything's in terms of x. So really it's just a matter of trying to clean this up and uh, prepare this for power rule. So if I expand um, these two binomials, it ends up being 150 minus 50x plus 4x squared. Then I distribute the x through, 150x minus 50x squared plus 4x cubed. Now we can find the derivative of each term with respect to x. 150 minus 100 plus 12x squared. I'm going to rearrange this and factor out the 2, left with 6x squared minus 50x plus 75. Uh, the 2 will just go away. We just have to worry about this portion here. This is a um, trinomial that we're going to have to go through uh, either factoring, uh, but this doesn't look like very easy to factor. So let's go through. We can go through quadratic formula, right? So negative uh, b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Plug all this in the calculator, we get x equals 6.3715 and 1.962. All right, the problem with 6.37 is that if x, if we're trying to cut 6 inches from both sides, uh, it'll be okay on the length side, but on the width side, there's only 10 inches to work with. So if we cut off 6.3 inches from both sides, there's nothing, there's not enough material um, uh, to make that happen. So, um, we know that this is extraneous. Uh, it just doesn't work um, for our scenario. So uh, the other solution is 1.962, which um, feasible um, it's a feasible uh, option. So uh, that's going to be our answer. Okay, and then so the maximum volume will have the dimension of x equals 1.962. So plug 1.962 in for the volume uh, to find the maximum volume. So 1.962 gets replaced uh, for all the x's, and then calculator work here. 
uh, 132.038 cubic inches. All right, number four, uh, the volume of a cylindrical tank um, with a top and bottom is to be 16 uh, pi cubic inches, so that's the volume. If the minimum amount of tin is to be used to construct a can, what must be the height in inches of the can? So uh, we're given some dimensions, some formulas here that we can use. Cylinder uh, has a volume of V equals pi r squared h, and the surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So here's the area of the circular bases, and then we have um, the vertical component. All right, so we're trying to optimize surface area. So surface area um, uh, will be right. We're trying to um, we're trying to get this in terms of one variable, and then trying to find the derivative. So if we look at our surface area equation, um, the variable that will probably be the easiest to replace will be h. All right. So if we want to replace h, we can look at our volume equation. Okay. So volume equation is pi r squared h. We're given a um, uh, a starting volume to begin with. We know we have to um, work around the fact that uh, uh, the restriction here is we're dealing with um, a cylindrical tan with a uh, tin can uh, with a volume of 16 pi. So we can replace 16 pi in for v and then solve for h. So divide both sides by pi r squared. The pi's cancel out. 16 over r squared is equal to h. So now we can replace h with 16 over r squared. And if we distribute this through, now notice that everything starts in terms of one variable. We can now find the derivative. Again, don't worry about the pi. The pi is just the coefficient. It's just a number. It's not a separate variable that we have to worry about. Really, the variable uh, is just going to be r. So uh, we can go ahead and just apply power rule and find the derivative. All right, so it looks like the first term is ready to go here. I can multiply the 2 and 16 to be 32 pi. Um, r and r squared will reduce to be just 1r in the denominator. If I bring that r up to the top, it becomes 32 pi r to negative 1. Now let's find the derivative here. Everything is set and ready to go for power rule. So s prime is equal to 4 pi r. 32 pi r to negative 1 becomes negative 32 pi r to negative 2. So now we just set our derivative equal to 0. 4 pi r minus 32 pi over r squared. Um, I'm going to bring the 4 pi r squared over to one side, the 32 pi r, 32 pi over r squared on the other side. If I do cross product here, I can isolate the r, divide both sides by 4 pi. Um, so r cubed is equal to 8, and then take the cube root, r is equal to 2. So we have our optimal um, radius, let, uh, radius value, which is uh, 2. Um, so it says, what must be the height? So uh, we know the radius, optimal radius is 2. So then to find the height, we just find an equation that will allow us to get h. So h is 16 over r squared. So we know r is 2. So 16 over 2 squared. 16 over 4 is 4 inches. So therefore, height is 4 inches.